Now there's a brand new web page, especially for this podcast. The Politocrat Daily Podcast can now be found on thepolitocrat.com. A brand new page that centralizes all of the places that you can listen to this podcast. The major platforms and many others at thepolitocrat.com. Lots of content that you can see there right now and every single day. So subscribe now to the Politocrat Daily Podcast and make sure you visit thepolitocrat.com. Thank you. Welcome to the Politocrat. I'm Omar Moore. It is Wednesday, January the 27th, 2021. On this edition of The Politocrat, how has your year been so far? What have you accomplished so far in 2021? On this particular edition, I'm going to focus on what you can do to start your day off better than you perhaps have in the recent past. And I also want to talk today about what we can all do to start making this world a better place. Welcome back. Before getting to the main topics of this episode, I want to thank everyone who has been, as you always are, it's not just yesterday's episode, but all the time, for your nice comments and uh, remarks, compliments, messages. I do appreciate them. And look, I know I say things like, you know, I don't uh, fancy uh, validation. And I, and I honestly don't. Um, so I don't want to come off as being some complete jackass about this, but I do want to say to you, thank you for your support. I think it's important to reiterate that because you really could be listening, and I'm sure you do listen to other podcasts, but you really could be spending your hour, hour and a half, two hours, two hours and two minutes, 40 minutes, 25 minutes, 43 minutes doing something else. So I am really thankful and grateful that you spent those specified times along the way listening to yours truly, to me. Thank you very much for that. I hope you're well on this Wednesday. And I want to just add one other thing before I get to this main subject matter. Coming up soon, the Politocrat Daily podcast online store will have a brand new collection for the start of 2021. So the merchandise, which I design each and every piece of it, I design yours truly. It will be all released soon. And the website is attached or connected or linked to the politocrat.com so you can go to the politocrat well I'll tell you exactly when you can go to it to get this new collection Um, it'd be really lovely of you wonderful people all of you if you could um, partake if you will in shopping I know that the stimulus check has probably been burnt through uh, so probably that's a bit too late for that as we um deal with what we're dealing with here and um but i really you know if you can if you can spare some loose change um take a look at this online store now the collection that's currently up and i will link to it again in the liner notes of this episode the collection that's currently up is the 2020 vote early color collection that's the t-shirts um from last year 
near the end of last year, when I really launched this online store, you know, the last three months of last year, final quarter of 2020, and that's gone over fairly well so far. And um, I'm not retiring that collection. Um, so if you're still interested in, in purchasing a T-shirt or two, uh, please do so. And I will link to the online store. I would give you the address, but the address is not easy to remember. All of that is to say that uh, coming soon, and I'll let you know when, I've already been previewing them on Twitter at the popcorn R E E L. So you can check there. I've pinned a tweet um, to the sneak peek of some of what you can expect to find in the brand new collection for the start of this year. Some early peeks at the merchandise, just some of the things that I've designed um, for your purchasing power. And you've got a lot of it. I know money is tight and tough uh, at this time. Um, and I, you know, I price these things with that in mind, um, to a large degree. Um, so I, I do try to be conscious of that. I think if you look at the vote early collection, uh, it's, it's, it's priced lower than what you expect. Most of those t-shirts and items, if you're going to buy a t-shirt or some item of apparel, um, at a large brand name, you're going to get probably twice the price of that. Um, but I do want to let you know that the new collection is coming. And I think you will like this. I think you will like it. I've posted a couple of items uh, today. And it's not going to be just t-shirts. It's going to be a number of different items across the spectra, if it, as it were. So stick around for those. Stay tuned as I will uh, alert you of when that all goes online. Um, And thank you for your support. So that's, again, a a thank you to you as well. So much appreciated. Much, much, much appreciated. So having said all of that, I I do want to turn now to uh, today. And one other thing, you know, it's funny... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> people will share all kinds of things online. I mean, this is a continuation for 10 seconds about yesterday's episode. But when I post one of my silly little polls, my annoying little polls on on Twitter about, well, is your real life persona similar or very connected to your social media persona? Are those real and online things connected? I don't get anybody responding to that, even in an anonymous poll. (laughs) I do find that fascinating. I really do, right? So, I mean, okay, fine. So you're fed up with my polls. I get it. (laughs) But, you know, that is so interesting, right? People will share all kinds of things on Twitter. But when you ask a question about, well, is your online social media profile and your real life persona the same are they kind of the same no one's going to even go anonymously (laughs) nobody's going to answer that for me oh come on people don't let me down come on I think that's really revealing. I'm going to retweet the darn thing now, just out of spite. And let's see if I get ignored again. <laughs> it's okay. I'm just having a laugh with everybody. And I hope you I do hope you're well. That was two minutes, not 10 seconds. My sense of time. And I'm someone that loves to be earlier than being on time. Time, being on time is really important. Um, anyway. It is it's extremely important. Being early, actually, is even more important. And I really like when people are um, because that means they care. And if you're on time, it means you care um, as well. But anyway, let's get to today, shall we? How has your year gone so far? And I don't expect for you to answer that to me. <laughs> I'm not going to poll you on that. Although in years past, I'd be tempted to. Maybe I would. No, I'm not going to do it now. But how has 2021 gone for you? 
so far. We are already into the 27th day of this brand new year. And I'm not talking about what's going on in the news. What in your life? Are you satisfied with the way this year has gone so far? I mean, would you believe it's already been a week since Joe Biden took the oath of office, since Kamala Harris took the oath of office, president and vice president of the United States of America? For just one week now, it's almost one full week. Well, technically, it will really be one full week tomorrow on Thursday, the 28th, because um, they didn't have a full day. So it'll probably be seven and a half days. But the point is, is that we are entering a full week. It's been exactly a week since they've been sworn in. And look at what they've done. They've done so much. They've signed over, well, President Biden has signed uh, about 50, at least 50 executive orders. 25 of those were in the first 24 hours of his term in office. I mean, that's incredible. I don't think there's been a a president at all who has signed that many executive orders in, in his, since it's been all he, in his first 24 hours in the job. I want to refresh your recollection really quickly before I get into this. Or get into the point that I'm trying to make. Signing uh, the Paris Climate Accord being, you know, throwing the U.S. back into it. You know, putting this country back into it. Um, Whether, you know, the the whole thing with DACA, reinstating DACA, uh, bringing that back. Ending all this silly, wasted money uh, for a stupid racist wall, a racist wall. It's just pathetic. You know, he threw, he got rid of that and all the spending for that. Signing um, an executive order to end federal government involvement in private prisons. Nope, we're not doing anything with that. Bye bye. COVID-19 executive order to make sure that travel and all kinds of federal Uh, building provisions are made. So if you're in a federal building, you've got to wear a mask. If you are um, uh, traveling, you've got to wear a mask federally. I mean, if you're on a train, a federal, you know, train between two states, you're supposed to be wearing a mask. This is all federal. Anything that's federal, anything, I mean, specifically, let me uh, reverse this. When you're on a plane, not reverse it, get on a plane, you've got to have a mask on. If you're traveling into the United States from another country, you have to have a test, uh, a result of a test. And it has to be, of course, a, a, a negative result. Three days before you board the plane. I mean, I know this is happening in other countries like the UK, who, by the way, have now lost over 100,000 people to this virus. <sighs> I could go off about Boris Johnson, but that's going to be for another day. But all of these executive orders, whether it's all the things with COVID-19, wearing masks in federal locations, federal buildings, parks, anything federal in the United States. I think these are all really good things. I hope you're still wearing your mask, by the way. Wherever you are, wear your mask, please. I still see people walking around. And they wait until they see you in the distance to start putting on a mask. Uh, that, that's not good enough. You have got to wear that mask as soon as you are outside. So put it on when you are indoors so that when you leave indoors, wherever indoors is for you, you already have it on. Don't wait until you're outside and someone's walking up to you to put that on. That's not going to work. That is not good enough. And so Joe Biden, uh, President Biden, did this. He signed this executive order. He signed so many other ones. I, you know, there was one yesterday, a few yesterday he signed, dealing with institutional racism and, and, and as he calls it, racial equity. I, I'm really uncomfortable with that word equity. What does that mean, by the way? I mean, I can go off on that too. What does equity mean? I mean, I know what the word equity means, means and I know the context. There's different contexts to it. But this is bigger than equity. This is about a whole system, folks. You you know this. This is about a whole system. 
And um, it's important those executive orders were done, but there's systemic racism that needs to be absolutely obliterated and destroyed. And we need to build a new system that's authored by us, right? That respects, protects, and the law reflects, protects the humanity of black people. Very important, of brown people, of the indigenous, of people in the LGBTQIA communities. This is this is what this is about, folks. And this, this in terms of racial equity, this is the thing we need to do when it comes to black people, particularly. There needs to be something real and concrete beyond the orders. I think it's a good start. I'm not criticizing President Biden. I am just saying that we're going to have to continue to do this work. A lot of us have done this work for so long. But my whole point is, is that all these executive orders have been signed. In one week, President Biden has done a hell of a lot, a heck of a lot. Vice President Harris as well. She got her second vaccine shot yesterday. And the whole point of me saying all of this is, these folks are hitting the ground running and they are accomplishing things. And we have to continue to push our agenda. Whatever those issues are in your life, and I've talked about them over and over and over, you have to write them down, push an agenda, please. This is one week in to the administration. You have to get involved. We cannot ever make that mistake again of going back to sleep for eight years as we did during President Obama's term, largely. Now, there are some organizations like Mums Demand Action, every day, you know, other Code Pink and others who were working relentlessly on their task, right? Whatever it was, whether it was gun, uh, gun sense laws, whether it was, you know, any kind of thing. So there are some organizations that were working through. I'm talking about the collective we, the collective you. We cannot afford to go back to sleep. And I'll get back to that a little bit later. I want to ask you, how has your your year been so far? How do you start your year? How did you start it? All of us have different challenges. All of us have different ups and downs and setbacks and great euphoric things happening. The, there's that light that you see. There's that light that you shine daily. Then you've got those people in your life who champion you. Then you've got people in your life who maybe don't. Is that how it has been for you? Have you had the push and pull of friends you know who are just really supportive and then those couple of friends who are kind of not because they're telling you the truth that you don't like to hear, but because you can notice something about them that's not good. And that maybe you've been trying to steer them in a direction that is more positive. Maybe they're going through some kind of crisis. Maybe they are needing some help. How did you start 2021? In fact, what have you accomplished so far in 2021? Have you been able to maintain any of your New Year's resolutions to the extent that you might make them? If you don't make them, then you don't have to listen to this. (laughs) But if you do make them, are there any of them that remain intact? If there are any goals that you have set or you did set prior to the beginning of 2021, how are you getting along with those goals thus far? As this episode was recorded on the 27th of January, 2021, how far have you got so far with the kinds of things you wish to do this year?
Have you started any of those things? Have you been able to complete any of those so far? How are you progressing? How are you moving along? This is a time to start to evaluate if you're not doing this because the month is almost up. I mean, we just looked around, didn't we not? At January 1st, and we, some of us, at least I, you know, I didn't, you know, raise a glass to a brand new year and some, a little bit of hope and a little bit of this and a little bit of that and away, and away we go. And now it's, you know, 26 days later. 26 days later. In the blink of an eye. Time flies, doesn't it? I guess my new motto is time flies whether you're having fun or not. (laughs) I mean, that's true, isn't it? Time definitely flies when you're having fun. That I can attest to. That you can attest to. But it also flies when you're not having fun. Although it seems as if if you're not having fun, time takes forever, especially if you're in a place of great difficulty. So I do want to, again, I, I, I want to say to you, well, ask you, how do you begin your day? Because I think the key to answering the question of what things have you accomplished so far in 2021 is to first answer the predicate question, which I am now laying out to you, which is, how do you begin your day? Your day might not begin in the morning. It might begin in the afternoon. It might begin at night. It might begin in the evening. It might begin at lunchtime. How do you start your day? What's the first thing you do? When you wake up, what's the first thing you do? Here's what I would like for you to do. I don't know if you have a morning, afternoon, evening routine or look, a routine. And I'm talking about whenever you wake up, because as I said, you could wake up in the middle of the night. That could be the start of your day. You could wake up at six in the evening. That could be the start of your day. If you're someone who works different kinds of hours, that could be the start of your day. If you're working from home, that could be the start of your day whenever that starts for you. If you're working in, uh, well, many people still aren't working in an office environment, but if you are doing that, That's your start of your day, perhaps. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's hours before that for you. We're living in a world now where offices are literally, you are your office. They're moving targets. Well, moving targets. Uh, No, no, not moving targets. Offices are mobile. So if you're someone who has the luxury or the privilege, if you will, of movement, In that way, you literally can move. Your office is you. You are your own office. You can be in this city, that city, that country, the other country, those countries, those countries, these countries over my shoulder. Well, you can't see where that is, but you get the idea is that you could be anywhere. And by the way, if you are not someone who has the uh, privilege of being able-bodied, if you're someone who is not able-bodied, someone who is having a lot of challenges, uh, you too can still be in different parts of the world without moving, right? If you get on Zoom, if you're able to have internet net access, and if you're someone who has a computer, you can be in all kinds of places in the world without even moving, right? You could You could be in... Hong Kong, you could be in London, you could be in Uganda, you could be in Cape Town, you could be in Stockholm, 
You could, you know, you could be anywhere, right? You could be anywhere, Melbourne, Victoria, Auckland, San Francisco. You could be anywhere, right? That's what, that's what it is. That's how you are seen in any number of places in the world. How do you start your day? Here's what I really would like for you to do. I want you, whether it is today or the day after, whenever you're hearing this, the day after you hear this, the very next day, the very next day, whenever that day starts for you, I want you, the first thing you do when you wake up, what I want you to do, and again, whether you are with someone or not, I want you to do this by yourself, first of all. I mean, by yourself, meaning I I want you to do this for yourself, rather. So you're in bed. You wake up. Your partner's next to you, your spouse. Or maybe you're sleeping, you know, you're, you're, you're alone, right? So whatever the circumstance, I want you to do the following. The next day after you listen to this episode. I want you to, when you wake up, I want you to open your eyes as you do, of course, when you wake up, right? I want you to be still. I want you to spend 10 seconds just lying in bed. 10 seconds. Don't say anything. Don't do anything. 10 seconds of that. Then 10 more seconds, I want you to count backwards from 10 to 1. Then, the next 10 seconds after that, I want you to count from 1 to 10. And when you're counting, I want you to count One, two, three. That's how I want you to count. And I don't want you to say it out loud. I want you to just say it in your head. Then I would like you, if you can do this, to take a deep breath. And then... I want you to lie in bed for just another 30 seconds. So do you get that? Ten seconds in bed, being still. Open your eyes, just be still. Then... 10 seconds of counting backwards from 10 to 1. Then, 10 seconds of counting forwards from 1 to 10. And then, a deep breath. That's how I want you to start your day. Try that, try that. I want you to try that. And I would really like to know if you think it makes a difference to you or if you don't want to tell me, just note to yourself if that makes any difference to you. I am trying in saying this to get a sense of meditation, a morning meditation. I mean, it's it's like mindfulness in a way, except this is much more abbreviated than that. Because, I mean, I guess the the thing behind this is, how do you wake up? You know, that's the other part of this whole thing. How do you wake up? Do you wake up scared, angry, nervous, worried, anxious, fearful? You just had a bad dream. You've got so much on your mind. How do you wake up? So that's connected to how you sleep. And all of that's connected to your mindset. 
And so the purpose of me providing this avenue of direction that you may or may not choose to take. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. Of course, of course, that's obvious, right? You don't need me to tell you that. But this is about this kind of, as I see it, this meditation of the mind. After you've gone through this sleep and you don't know if the sleep's been, well, you do know to a degree, whether the sleep you've been having is turbulent or whether it's relaxed, you may be waking up in a state of anxiety before you even really start your day. And then it becomes very scattershot. Maybe there's been something that's been going on between you and your partner, your, your spouse, or even in or whether it's by yourself in your life and you just tossing and turning. Well, I do think that the key to beginning the day, the next day, is to just take that few seconds of reordering your brain, whether you whether it's mindfulness, whether it's meditation. And I think that that counting exercise is going to help you. I really do believe that. That counting exercise. 10 seconds of just lying there. Then 10 seconds after that, counting from 10 to 1. Right? And count, I want you to do it backwards first. That's very important. Because I think that when you're counting backwards like that, there is a sense of anxiety. And I think that that there's a reduction in it. If you count backwards, you're kind of anticipating something when you get closer to the number one. It's like when a rocket launches and it's a countdown, 10, 9, or whether the ball, when the ball dropped in Times Square at the end, you know, the big, to begin this year. You're anticipating something. When you get closer to the lower number, you're anticipating something to happen. But when you're doing this in bed, as you're counting backwards, it's kind of this journey back into you, right? It's this 10, 9, 8. And you're counting backwards like this to get to this place. It's, I call it a centering. And you're getting back to yourself and you get to the number one. Then you stop and then you count from one to 10. So you're climbing the steps of your mind as you count from one, two, three, four, and so on. And you do it, like I said, it's kind of paced. It's not quick. And then you ascend to the number 10 in your mind. You did it, right? You got to the number 10 in your mind. It's this mental elevation through simple counting. Seriously. And then you take that deep breath. And you just kind of sit with that. And then you go on with your day. When I come back, one other thing I think that you should do right after you have completed that exercise that I have just given you right after this welcome back when you do complete that task and it will only take a few seconds or a few minutes at the very most maybe what two minutes that whole exercise if that maybe much less but when you do complete the 10 seconds of silence while you're lying in bed, eyes open, and then the 10 seconds counting backwards fairly slowly from 10 down to 1, the countdown, and then the 10 seconds of counting from 1 to 10, and then the deep breath, and just kind of take that deep breath and exhale. And you just kind of just sit there, lie there, whatever, and then you get on with your day. After you've done the exercise that I've provided, I really would like you to write down the things that you want to get done for the particular day that you are doing this. Write down the things that you want to get done for, say, tomorrow. Tomorrow's Thursday when I'm recording this. 
This is the day before, right? This is Wednesday. So on Thursday, I want you to, after you've done this exercise that I'm asking you to do, I want you to write down some of the things you need to get done for Thursday. It could be things that need immediate attention. It could be something that you haven't done yet from the beginning of the year, but you want to start getting done. Or some loose ends that have not been tied up. It could be something big. It could be something small. It could be something as simple as I need to change these shoelaces in my shoes. And I need to be able to place an order to get new shoelaces. If you are in a city that has not opened up yet. By the way, San Francisco just on Monday. uh, Well, all of California, according to the governor we have here. um, (laughs) You know, he lifted this order all of a sudden. Uh, Out of the blue, just lifted it. I, I don't know why. Because, of course, he got calls from. Yeah, I know this is cynical, but this is the truth, right? You know, this is true. He got calls from corporate business leaders who probably said, look. Gavin, this is it. Lift this order. Our businesses are suffering and your money ain't coming to you for the next, for your re-election bid so soon. So lift this order. And he did. Monday, boom, it's lifted. <laughs> uh, never mind that. I can go into that again, but I, I am going to say that for another day. Because today, this is about you. Every day is about you, but today particularly about what you can do to stimulate your mind into action, but in a different way. And if you're already doing these things, fine, great, great, then you're way ahead of me. I'll tell you that. But if you aren't doing these kinds of things, you know, if you can do yoga in your house, then do yoga in your house. If you have a meditation regimen and that's working for you, then Keep at it. The only, well, one of the reasons I'm I'm providing this is because I believe that we have to have a mental reordering. And I mean, in our minds, how we approach the day, how we begin the day is everything. And you might begin the day with an argument with your spouse and you might not have started that argument. So what do you do, right? Your spouse and you have a big ass argument. And maybe the argument was from the previous night, but it kind of continues. It didn't get resolved. And you're in the next morning and you're you're still, this is why this exercise, I want you to do it. Because even if there's this unresolved thing going on, this counting exercise, I think is going to help. It's all about starting your day mentally in the right place for you. Now, I didn't say in the right place. I said in the right place for you. Very important difference. Very important difference. So one of those things that you write down, remember I said a few moments ago, write down some of the things that you want to do on Thursday? What if one of them's that unresolved argument? I need to, I want to patch things up. Even if I didn't start the argument, I want to patch things up. I want to, and you know, you might be in a relationship where you are the one that's always, you know, taking it upon yourself to do the patching up, whether you started the argument or not. But the whole point, again, is this reframing of our minds. How we get involved in the days and how we start them is everything, as I just said. I want you to write down maybe three things, all the things you want to do, rather, and the three things that you know you can do on Thursday or any other day. But for the sake of this episode, since it's on a Wednesday, the three things that you want to get done for for Thursday, I want you to write them down. Or any day you listen to this, I want you to write them down, whether it's that morning or the or the morning or the night before. I want you to write down those three things that you want to get done and I want you to accomplish them. I don't care what they are for you. They could be something really simple as I'm going to cook this omelet. 
I don't like to cook, but I'm going to cook this thing. I'm, I'm not talking about me personally. <laughs> I'm just saying in general, right? I, meaning the general I or the general we, not me personally. I, you know, you're saying to yourself, perhaps, I don't want to cook. I don't feel like it, but I'm going to do this. Or I, I really need to do that. Or I really need to do the other. I need to watch less television, for example. I need to take a break from social media, right? It could be something like that. It could be, right, today, I don't care what's going on in the world. I'm going to take a day off social media. Or I'm going to take three hours off social media. Or I'm going to take six hours off social media. That's an accomplishment, if you can do it, of course. Now, you can write these things down. Whether you accomplish them, of course, is another story. But you have to try. And I know it's really difficult. Every so often I do this, by the way, with social media. And it's not just with work. It's with taking, you know, taking time away from Twitter. Tweet, tweet. You need to mute the tweet, tweet. And literally, this is going to help you. Because... I have found it has helped me. It is good to get away from social media. And by the way, it is good to get away from the TVs, right? <laughs> and I, and you know, I use that term. I know it's TV, it's television. But the reason why I say TVs is because there's more than one. You have more than one television in your house, even if you don't have a television set. Presumably, you have a laptop. Presumably, maybe you don't. I know people who don't have televisions. Maybe you do as well. Maybe you are one of the people who doesn't have a TV. Actually, you're doing better than the rest of us. <laughs> because all of this TV and this and that and the other. But the reason why I say you've got more than one TV, even if you don't have a television set, is simple. You've got a laptop. You've got a desktop. You've got a phone that has a screen on it. You could watch TV on it. You can watch programming on it. Netflix, Hulu, da 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 da. I'm not going to plug any more of your streaming platforms. But you could do this, right? You could do this on an iPad. That's a TV, right? It, it it's a screen. You can watch programming on it. You can watch documentary on it, film. So that's why I say the word TVs. Because you've got more than one of them. I do want you to write these three things down. I do want you to write these three things down that matter in your life. Please, write down what matters to you, right? Write down that agenda. The agenda that you want. The agenda. A-G-E-N-D-A, not G-E-N-D-E-R. I want you to write that down. What are those three things, right? I want you to do that. I want you to do it today, tomorrow, but do not wait. Or again, alternatively, the three things of, in your day that you want to get done. Okay, maybe one of them is if you're fortunate enough to be able to do this, I want to take a walk. And in fact, I would recommend that you take a walk. In fact, I would recommend that you take that walk as soon as you get up after you have taken stock in writing down the things you want to accomplish for that day. I want you to take a 10 minute walk if you can. And if it is safe for you to do so. Because you could be in an environment where you've got some man who is violent. So I recognize that that is not easy for everybody. It may not be easy for you. If one of those three things is I'm going to call that domestic violence hotline today. Make sure that you write that down in your head and make sure that you find either a friend to do this for you or if you can do it yourself with complete safety, please do that. We have to take care of our minds and we have to take care of our hearts. And I do recognize that when I speak about these three things, that I want you to write down. There are some people 
maybe some of you, maybe some of you who won't be able to do this for some very concrete, real world reasons. You may know someone in this position who cannot do this. I do recognize that. Support networks are very important in that moment as well, by the way. People that you love and trust. I do think it's very important to write things down, uh, or at least in your mind, okay, these are the things I want to do. Take that 10-minute walk in the morning. If you can do so with complete safety, take that 10-minute walk. Walk around your block. It could be five minutes. If you're unable to walk, make sure that you open a window if you can or have someone do it for you and stick your head out the window for five minutes. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. Take that walk around the block. Take that walk down the street. Something, right? You've already elevated your mind. You've elevated your mind and now you're elevating your body right even if you're someone who doesn't have the benefit of of being able to use their body you can if you are aided in wheelchairs in terms of uh, wheelchair assistance and you're able to do that or if you have someone that can do that for you and help you they can either help take you for a walk in terms of the wheelchair they can have you uh, uh, come out um out into the open and they can accompany you as you are wheelchairing they can help you or if you're indoors they can open a window for you perhaps and just sit at that window for a few minutes just be contemplating what's going on in your mind and in your heart just for a few minutes just for a few minutes I do believe that we can all do something. And if you are someone who can walk, take that 10 minute walk. Please do it. Do it early. Do it right after you've written down these three things. You are going to feel so much better. I promise you. And if you're feeling like a real daredevil, take that same walk just before it gets dark. Five minutes, 10 minutes. And preferably, if you're someone who is fortunate enough to be living near a park or living near green spaces, greenery, take a walk near that, right? Take a walk in a park, if it's safe for you to do so. For five minutes, 10 minutes, just take stock of what is around you. If you're fortunate enough, if you are living in what I would call, well, so-called concrete jungle, you can't take stock of all these lovely trees that you might have near you. You just have to just walk, then walk, then walk And just take stock in the fact that you can absorb the atmosphere that you're in. Let me know how you get on with that. Or just check in with yourself and ask yourself how you're getting along with that. You need to have these dialogues with yourself too. Whether you have a partner or not, you need to do this. And you need to check in with your partner too and and tell your partner to do the same thing. If you find that what I'm saying to you works for you or if you find that what you are already doing works, I hope that your partner is also doing the same thing. I really do. No matter what they are doing, no matter what they are doing, what he or she are doing, please, please, You can do this together, but I want you to start by doing it alone. This exercise, the counting, the writing down the three things, the the walk. You might want to walk with your partner, but I want you to start doing this by yourself. And then incorporate that with your partner. If you don't have a partner, if you, you you live alone, whatever it is, I want you to just do this for a day or two. See if it works for you or not. I really want you to also try to accomplish 
two or three things in a day. I don't care what they are. They're meaningful to you. It's about whether you call your senators, and I want you to call these Republican senators now. Whether you want to, whatever. But I'm going to talk when I come back. And that's the final segment will be when I come back. I want to talk to you about these phone calls that you have to make to these Republican senators right after this. Welcome back. And by the way, your partner might be on the other side of the world, right? So that's another consideration. What if my partner's not with me right now? She's on the other side of the world. He's on the other side of the world. They're on the other side of the world. And that's possible. They could be in another city. They could be in another country. They could be in another solar system. I mean, they might be in another solar system and they might be sitting right next to you. (laughs) Oh, that's not funny. That's not funny because some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you know what I am talking about. That's kind of kidding on the square, as they say in Massachusetts. In other words, joking, but you're not really joking. Or as uh, the saying goes, many a truth spoken in jest. I do hope, by the way, that this does work for you. Whatever you're doing, if you're doing what you're doing and it's working, then great. Then you probably, maybe you disregard my uh, little exercise or maybe not. Maybe you, you incorporate that too. But whatever works for you. And if it's working, keep going with it. Keep going with it. You know, whether you, um, if your goal is, I want to read this chapter of this book today, then hey. Whatever it might be, um, please, I hope that it works for you. And then the platform builds, which is why I want to get now to this about these Republican senators. This is one of the things I think everyone who is listening to me right now, particularly if you are in the United States listening to me, needs to do. You need to call Republican senators. If one of the goals for you in 2021 is I want to be more active politically in terms of being interactive with my state, local or federal officials, then do so. Because, of course, on the local level, you have to do this, too. And I've not, you know, I've I've neglected to talk about that to a great degree over the last few weeks. Um, But in the distant past, I have said that local elections are very important you know, interact with your local officials. They're right there in your backyard. There's no reason not to. I feel, you know, they are, I'm guilty of this sometimes where I will know everything that's going well. Not everything. I'll know a sizable amount of what is going on in the world, but I won't know everything that's going on in the city I live in. <laughs> and it happens to us, right? We can be, we can read chapter and verse about what's going on in one a country here or there, but... If someone asked you, well, what went on at the uh, board of supervisors in San Francisco? And you're, <laughs> you're kind of, um, <laughs> it's downright pitiful, isn't it? it? It's pretty bad. Local news, you know, do you watch your local news? You know, that's another thing. But anyway, you need to call these Republican senators. I don't care. What Rand Paul does. That's why you've noticed I've not said anything about Rand Paul. Or these 45 other Republican senators. I do not care. You know why? Because this is all about manufacturing consent. This is all about manufacturing your consent. And that specifically means. That the quote unquote powers that be are grooming, and I hate that word, and I'm using it out of context, and I can't stand that word, because it doesn't mean what, what, what I'm saying about that word 
is not the way it's meant in common cultural language in this country and in the UK, for example, as well. Because that, what that means, it's so hideously disgusting and evil. I should say they are softening you and, you're so, and they're softening your mind to believe that there is no way that 17 of those Republican fill in the blank will vote to convict. Well, let me tell you something. You may believe that that's true. You may even in fact know. You may even in fact know that that is true. However, today's date is the 27th of January. The beginning of that trial is going to be that trial. You know who I'm talking about. That trial is going to be starting on Tuesday, February the 9th at 1 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, I I know that date, but I don't know what's going on the Board of Supervisors. But that's the point. How many days is that? You know your math, right? That's at least 13 blooming days, right? 13 days. Are you going to just sit back and go, oh, well, Rand Paul and 45 other Republicans, um, well, they didn't want this trial to start. They don't want the trial. Uh, so all is lost. All is lost. Uh, I'm not going to call them. It's a done deal anyway. That's what they want you to think. They want you to think, dear listener, that this is a done deal. But you know what? It's not. You know why? Because there's you. Because there's me. Because there's us. We have phones. Many of us have phones. More phones than we do have, well, TVs. But we can call these senators. We must call these senators. No ifs, ands, buts. No ifs, ands, or buts. You got to call them. This is this manufactured consent, and then the media puts it out there. And they're trying to take your power away from you before you've even used it. You know what that power is? It's the power that you have to pick up a phone and call 202 225 31. Two one or two zero two 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 four three one two one. I want you to call these senators. I want you to put that on your to do list. One of the three things has got to be or should be. I'm going to call five Republican senators today, or ten, or fifty, or one. But if you're not doing anything, if you're not picking up that phone and at least calling one of them at minimum, you cannot be heard to sit there and rant and rave. That's the point of my earlier point of wanting to be more active this year, that you really should be doing that politically. Engaging more is really what I'm saying. And you are not engaging if you're sitting back and feeding yourself with the Well, not feeding yourself, but you hear these stories and they're put there for a reason. And the stunt is done for a reason. Oh, 46 of them, they're not going to vote. To, they don't want to try. And they lost, by the way, right? They lost. The trial is going to continue. going to start on February 9th. That's a Tuesday. It's 13 days from now. What are you going to do in those 13 days? Are you going to wait until the trial starts to call? These, I almost said police, (laughs) these Republicans, or are you going to get on the phone now and call 202-225-3121 and ask to speak to Rand Paul, who is holding up the Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act. Let me remind people what that is. It was an act that was passed almost a year ago, February the 26th, I believe. 2020 was the House passing House Democrats. Well, actually, it was passed by the Republicans as well in the House. It was 410 to 4. 
four people voted against the Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act. So nearly all these Republicans voted for the act in the House. Bipartisan effort. And Rand Paul in the Senate, meanwhile, said, I have a problem with the bill. I have a problem with the act. And I need to just look at it some. I want to give it a look-see, you hear? They don't talk like that in Kentucky. But I want to give it a look. Because there's a problem I have with it. It saves too many black people. I mean, is that his problem with it? You need to call Rand Paul first. I don't care where you are in the country. I don't care what they ask you. If you get an aid, well, what part of Kentucky are you from? Bluegrass country. (laughs) You know, all of it. I don't care where you're from. I want you to call him. He needs to get your first phone call. You're sitting on the Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act? Oh, dear. Oh, no. Come on, folks. This is what I mean by engagement, right? You're sitting on that? You got a problem with it. And you got 410 members of the House of Reps last year, almost a year ago. And they were Republicans and Democrats, both. They want this bill passed, and they passed it. And it's all stuck in the Senate now. And you got a majority Democratic Senate with the vice president being the president of the Senate. It gives the Democrats the edge and the leadership. You need to be on this. If black lives matter to you, you need to be calling Rand MF and Paul. Right F and now and calling them. And asking him, not only about this impeachment thing and telling him to vote for it. I don't care what he said yesterday. You need to also get involved and talk to him about this Emmett Till anti-lynching act that he is sitting on. And you need to tell him to buck up his ideas and support that act and vote yes on it. You have no excuse now. If black lives matter to you, dear listener, then you need to do this. It's okay to post that on Twitter. It's okay to parade it on Facebook. I see houses all around here that have signs in them that say justice for Breonna Taylor. That say black lives matter. But I want you to act. To act. Pick up that phone. Come on, do it now. Pick up that phone. Call Ramp. He's the first person you should be calling. Sitting on Emmett Till anti-lynching. I mean, come on. You need to call all of these Republicans. Every last one of them. In the Senate. Every, I don't care. And they're going to ask some of them, some of these, I've called them. And some of them say, well, where are you from? And what, what's your zip code? Or what's your... Go research your counties then. If you're that worried about it. I don't care. You cannot find an excuse to not do this. Unless you've got some really severe issues in your life going on need to be dealt with. I can, or whatever. If you've got some issues, not even severe ones. If you've got some very important things, family, kids, whatever, that they have some issue that you need to deal with, I hear you. Then that's something that's not going to be top of mind. Right. That, you know, whatever it might be. And you can't do that right now. But I hope you can find five minutes to do it, because literally calling one of these Republican senators takes less than five minutes to do. And I'm telling you, phone calls work the best phone calls and actual physical snail mail letters. Those are the two things that work the best. I've done both of them and they do respond. I get responses. I got responses from Senator Barbara Boxer, when she was here in California, I got a response from Senator Dianne Feinstein. Of course, it was, you know, the, uh, I mean, some of it was somewhat boilerplate, but it, the point is, I got a response. These folks do read your letters and they do listen to your voicemail. And if you do get through to an aide or a staffer, 
Be nice. Be respectful to that staffer. They are only working for some rat bag. <laughs> but I'm just, I'm sorry. I mean, be respectful of them. They're just trying to make a living like you are. Right? Be respectful to them, but make it very clear to them. These folks have to vote to convict. You had five people killed. One other person ended their lives, took their own life. You had Democratic House members catch COVID-19 from huddling with some of these Republicans. At least that's what they say. They caught it from them. You've got Congress people bringing guns into the chamber and refusing to have them searched. They're not going through the magneton. Come on. These are the reasons why you have to call these folks and con- convey this stuff to them. And a terrorist attack on the seat of power. And a vote to acquit is a vote to let this happen again. You need to tell these folks this. When you call them, be respectful, but be very clear with them that you need to vote to convict. Because a vote to acquit is a vote to let this terrorist attack happen all over again. Start calling today, please. Thank you very much for listening to this edition of The Politocrat. I'm Omar Moore.